Gonna have to make this part. It's on its way. Birchie, has he got it? I do not believe it. I do not believe it. Birchie, you've got yourself a new fan in me, mate. Ishimi is hitting in first here. Down and windy off the right-hand side. It's coming back, you know, and wow. Hello, my name is Rachel Stringer and welcome to the second stop of the European eTour 2020, the Made in Denmark tournament presented by Freya. Now, before we get into today's tournament in a slightly different, unusual setting, let's have a look at how the tournament is going to be played. As you can see, we have two groups with four players in each. Every match is nine holes match play until the final, which is 18 holes match play. A win gives you three points and a draw one point. Players ranked two and three in each group will play a decider match against number two and three from the other group. Then the winner from the two decider matches will progress through to those semi-finals. After the semi-finals, it's time for the final. And after that, we will have found out who will be crowned the Made in Denmark champion. Group B is so exciting. It has two of the finalists from Abu Dhabi in there. And of course, it has the winner, Golf X3. And it's time now to have a little look back and see exactly what he got to do after his win over in Abu Dhabi. The breeze just changes the golf courses massively around here. But it's good because it provides a little bit more challenge. For me, I'm pretty much all Callaway stuff. You want me to go first? Oh my god. Yeah. And now we'll see Jay Smithers do the professional thing and just cozy this one up for a tap in par, probably, and, and win the hole and get back that one up lead. Yes, of course it goes in. Let's see how aggressive he's going to be. This will be a bit of an insight into his mindset. Is he going all for out here and trying to win this hole? Or is he going to just play it a little more conservatively? I think at this stage in the game, he might have to give this one a run. Ah, slightly misjudged that one again, didn't he? Stressing it's out still a bit rolling. there, as it's you can still see. Rolling. It's still rolling. He's done it again, Rach. He's done it again. Oh. Once again, he's played aggressive and he's now given himself a, a fairly... Lengthy par safe part. A little bit more straightforward than the last one he had, but he looked in pole position to win this half. He doesn't make this. He could be losing it. Oh, no! What's he done? He takes his glasses off his head. He can't believe it. Perfect start, like you said there, Seb, for Jay Smithers. He he knows what he's capable of, of course. He was a finalist in Abu Dhabi, uh, taking on Babzilla there, the seventh seed. I'm sure he kind of just wanted to get the nerves out of the way for his first ever game playing at this kind of level. Seb, can I just comment on um, the character that Golf X3 is using as well? We mentioned he's the youngest in the competition and he's given his uh, avatar their grey hair. Obviously, of course he does. I think that's a nice little message to the field, isn't it? Just letting, giving him that air of authority that maybe his youthful looks doesn't give him. We're talking about his looks. Over in Abu Dhabi, I was comparing him to the great Louis Oosthuizen. Looks very, very familiar to me, to Louis Oosthuizen. And he's playing some fantastic golf just like Louis is right now. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I've got no words. He judged it to absolute perfection. I was speechless watching that ball go in. That, for me, is the part of the tournament so far from Birchie. He gets himself back to all square with only two to play. Birchie, at this stage in the game, it looks as though if he makes this one, we are going to go all square up the last for these two. I don't oh, believe it. he doesn't. I don't believe it. He's made that massive breaking putt earlier in the game to get that one back and he's then missed the short one like that to go one down to go fix three of one to play i can't believe it he'll be gutted with that it looks as though birchie is going to slight early ding here is it enough to make the putt is it going to break back it hasn't it's just stayed out there which means golf x3 is going oh. the game but he has this putt to win it by two which could be crucial let's not forget it's important about the whole difference here holes one versus holes lost if it's a tie is in play as we saw be so crucial in group a so this part to win by two and of course golf x3 finishes off just where he left off in abu dhabi he wins the game two up over birchie can he convert i fully expect him to but this has got his attention let me tell you <laughs> oh and that is Ouch. why that is why jay smithers 
did not give him that hole. You saw Goldfix 3 <laughs> readjust himself in his chair there. That will have hurt him. If Goldfix 3 makes this putt, he will be winning this match at a minimum of two up, which is, you know, it's hard to say an upset because of the quality of Jay Smithers, but we haven't seen Goldfix 3 lose a game all year on the E-Tour. He's going to be losing now. It's just a case of by how many. You know, he won his first game by two shots. He could be losing this one by three if he doesn't make this. Yeah, second matchup. The streak is over and he's undone some of the good work of his first match. He's leveled out his uh, his whole difference. But, you know, now the man, the man to be in this group, Jay Smithers, two from two. Well played to you. And now we've got Babzilla is forced to have to hit a very good shot in here. He's taking his time, making sure he gets exactly the right power on this one with his sandwich. It's not a heartbeat moment, which means he's going to have more work to do. Yeah, the putt is conceded as we expected, which means Birchie, he's looking for that bounce back. He's finally getting into his stride here. And the guy's halved the fourth and we're now on to the fifth, which is a really picturesque par three here at Pebble Beach. Really important. You miss this one to the right of the hole to have any sort of uphill putt. Ideally short of it, but you can see Birchie's only done half the job there. He's right of it, but he's slightly above it. So that won't be a gimme birdie, that's for sure. Babzilla at two down is going to be forced to probably take a really even more aggressive line helped by the wind can he get it in there low and right of the hole he has got it lower the hole uh, and about level to be honest I'd say advantage Babzilla here on the fifth he has got the longer pup probably the more straightforward well, I fancy him to make it this one Rach I think he can knock this one in and can maybe get his game off to a start and it's exactly what he's done. Yes. Very well played, Babzilla. Nicely, nicely done. That will settle the nerves. Birchie can throw a dagger in his heart, though, if he can birdie right on top of him. <laughs> I think he has, you know. That yellow ball. No, it's moved right no! at the end. It's moved at the end, so Babzilla does draw one back. If this goes in, he can't lose. It's just going to miss out on the low left-hand side, which means Babzilla now has this putt to tie things up all square and we see our first draw of the competition so far Oof. he's done it absolutely phenomenal clutch birdie on the ninth which means the guys go all square and it's a draw rachel yes yeah, evan we know what a draw means a draw means they both get a point a piece so both Birchie and Babzilla currently sit with one point each. I think maybe we've got an even stronger field here this week than we had in Abu Dhabi. There doesn't really seem to be many weak links, to be honest. There's no gimme matches. We're seeing anyone could almost beat anyone. You know, we've already seen Patent lose his first match in God knows how long. We've seen Young 46 struggle against some, some players that are new to the E-Tour. Let's take a look at the Group B standings after the first two rounds. Jay Smithers has taken the lead with six points. It's time for our third and final matchups in Group B. Look how much those balls run on these greens. Absolutely fr frightening. Bit of an insight to what we might see here at Oakmont. Now, this is well, not, I say, a straightforward putt, but one of the more straightforward putts. No messing around here for Golf X3. I fully expect him to make this one and get back to uh, winning ways. We're used to seeing an up next to his name. And once again, we have him one up in this match. Yeah, I mean, we kind of expected that, I guess, going up against someone of the quality of golf for X3. Currently, he is tied with Jay Smithers, six points apiece at the top of the table in Group B so far. But it was a pretty good matchup, though. Babzilla, he came back strong and fighting. I'm not too sure who's further away here. It's actually going to be Birchie, uh, who's got the slower uphill putt off the left. This is one he's probably going to need to make, and it's on its way. It's got a chance. And once again, Birchie just getting the read ever so wrong. And I tell you what, Jay Smithers is a more straightforward putt than we thought. Downhill, but not much break. This to go two up with only a few to play. And now Birchie has got all sorts of trouble ahead of him. He's got four holes left to turn around a two down, two down difference. And a man like Jay Smithers is on this sort of form, you know, beating the undefeated Peyton Golf X3 so far. So that's it. It's the end of the group stages. We now know who has made it through to the semi-finals, but we still have a few playoff matches to go to see who will be joining Jay Smithers and F Magnet.